I've been sort of acting for quite a while, you know, and I just, on a, uh, when I was 15, I was in War and Peace uh, with Audrey Hepburn uh, and Henry Fonda uh, and Annie Tegberg, my goodness. Uh, she had the Italian uh, lighting men falling out of the gantry. <laughs> However, uh, I digress. I was 17, although I can't remember having gone to uh, audition uh, for Leslie Norman uh, at all. I might have met him because he said something to me uh, very late on in the filming which uh, uh, might explain uh, what I say or what he said to me. We were filming in the Sheerness Stockyard and uh, it was on a station with ship that, uh, and troops going up the scrambling nets uh, off our small sh small boat and the boat was sort of came in with Richard Attenborough and it hit it hit the not criticizing Richard Attenborough's driving, uh, but it hit and bounced off, it was coming off, and so I, I seized hold of the scrambling net and I held up onto our rope and hauled the boat in, so, and, and then when I sort of came up, I was sort of, he said, oh yeah, well, very good, very good, that, I, well done about that, he said, of course, you've been, uh, you've been around boats all your life, he said, and, I, and off he went, because he was always on the boom, off him, and I thought, I haven't, I haven't been around boat. what is he talking, and then I thought, did, was it something I said at an audition, which I now can't remember, because I'm afraid actors will say anything to get a job, or at least most actors, you know, can you write? Yes, I'll take writing, can, do you, can I get writing lessons? Uh, you know, do you know about, but, oh yes, yes I do, yes I've been, oh, look. but uh, no, uh, so uh, I haven't been around books all my life, and I can't remember whether I told a lie or not, uh, well, remembering. He was a really, really tough, he was a tough, man and I think this is an expression called firm but fair he didn't call you names and say oh that, that was very good and I'd like you a lot of directors gentle you along they pray they lift you he sort of did it and then it was that all right you know here in the gate check it out. all right that's a print next one and and the classic example of that was filming uh, Bernard Lee the death scene of Bernard Lee and I had a close-up, in which I can't take it anymore, and run away up the beach, and <laughs> did so, and and it kept on going. The camera was <laughs> he said, keep going, uh, and then I thought, and I stopped. And I said, come back, come back, come on, we're going again, run. <laughs> and I, so I ran in my Wellingtons and, and ran back and and did that, and and and, uh, and then broke and ran. I don't know if I, uh, and then I suddenly turned around and he was marching off. They were all packing up to go to the next set up. And I thought, oh, thank you, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> it was all right, was it? And also another example uh, of him being firm but fair, there was a scene in the tank in MGM, which is now a cold store in Boringwood. But one of, uh, one of the, uh, the company, the small company who escaped in the heron, the small boat, Richard Attenborough's small boat, we were sunk we were in the water and he was the one who couldn't swim uh, and he said uh, I, I can't swim, he said but if you gave me a life thing under the, under the, the battle dress I, I could do, and he said no, he said thank you, he said that's very good, I, I appreciate you offering but no, I won't have you do that, you don't need to do that, thank you and I, and I thought oh, yeah that's, 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 that is fair and uh, considerate. Uh, so basically, he was he was on definitely on the plus side, and also uh, looking back at it, I mean, he had he had such a lot to do. I mean, no wonder he wanted, it. and he was very proud of bringing it in uh, under budget because uh, uh, it was a big, big because uh, Ealing Ealing Films uh, they did wonderful film, but they were kind of much uh, sort of more intimate and smaller budgets. Uh, this was with hundreds, hundreds of people you know, on the beaches and we were there for a long time filming big scenes. Uh, no wonder he didn't stop and say, yes, lovely, lovely, <laughs> lovely performance, Sean. And he was off to the next one. I never thought I'd see a sight like this. That's neither, sir. What a mess. What a shambles we've made of this whole rotten affair. <laughs> the beach was uh, uh, Camber, Camber Sands. 
which looks amazingly like uh, the, the original beach. Not that I've visited, the, but the film that one has seen of the original beach. We were on location for several, I can't remember how many weeks exactly, but several weeks. The other thing that just occurs to me about the, 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 the big beach scenes was the, uh, the, the explosions, because they, they marked the sand with a little dark smudge, because uh, Leslie Norman said, we don't want anybody, then we want them to know that that's where it is, and just remind them we don't want anybody to be a hero. <laughs> you, you avoid those. I remember, I remember running and suddenly thinking, where are they? And even in those days, I was a little short-sighted. Is that a black smile? And, and really sort of, and people were saying, sure, it's all right, they're not real anyway, they're not real. And I said, no, I was, it was acting. It was acting, but I uh, whoosh, and indeed, they were, they were uh, one of the stuntmen did get a sort of sand in his eyes when he was doing a, a, a proper, you know, a stunt that had been designed, but he still uh, it went, and uh, so he had to be swabbed out. But he was there for the next one. They were tough guys. The scale of the production, well, I was sort of gobsmacked by uh, Southeastern Command, had, uh, the British Army had uh, sent, well, I got the impression it was uh, several thousand troops just for a brief period for those massive, uh, when they said they take cover and they all run. I mean, that was, that was quite extraordinary. I thought that, that was, uh, and also the, then they kept, they kept a company of the, of the uh, after they'd done the big, big scenes for the sort of the mid shots. Uh, and. <laughs> They were all dressed in, obviously, the 1940s battle dress and dressed down and dirtied up. But the, the sergeant major, he was going among them, saying, smack yourself up, lad. Come on, do that button up, lad. You know, and he said, sort of that straight, that sort of, you know, cap comforter. Come on, straight, lad. Don't wait. And the wardrobe were coming around saying, no, 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 please. No, don't. No, they've been, not, they've been retreating. You know, they've been through hell. No, don't. You mustn't do that. And then, uh, he was, um, as, the, as they all said, uh, the, uh, the squad, he, he, he had them up on the hard section above the beach when they were, suddenly he'd take them off to drill. And then if he said, right, where, are you, where have they all gone? He said, he's got them up down there. <laughs> come on here, pick your knees up, come on, I don't I'm <laughs> back. So, uh, but they, were, they, they quite enjoyed their, their, uh, their uh, stint. Uh, apart from being taken off to drill. I remember also, uh, because we were out in the boat, Richard Attenborough, I was in Richard Attenborough's boat, and Bernard Lee uh, uh, offshore a lot of the time. Sometimes we, we eventually came ashore, but we, they were shooting stuff offshore. And I remember, <laughs> and Richard Attenborough also, is another thing, he wasn't a wonderful sailor. Uh, so, and this tiny boat, which also leaked f sort of fuel fumes into the cockpit, <laughs> so he was kind of sort of leaning over the boat, uh, trying to get some fresh air a lot of the time in between. Uh, and also we filmed a bit when they, uh, they said the French Navy sent a, a, a French, a sloop. I thought sloops were things that had sails on, but apparently there, there was a sort of proper battleship with me, which was called a sloop, uh, which was very small and lightly armed, but to, to ferry troops off and, and, and get them up the side. And so we did that, and then we, we didn't go back for lunch. Uh, we were going to have lunch on the sloop, and the, the French offered, offered to, you know, would you like to have lunch? You know? And the uh, the uh, assistant director said, no, 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 we, it's all been arranged, it's all been arranged, uh, it's, that's fine. So he's sort of, rather sort of scruffy looking, kind of coming out of the, you know, I know the, the, uh, the chap who was 
uh, running the boat, the Heron, our boat. He kept saying, he was a, a, a scruffy lot, you know, he's an ex-naval man, very scruffy. But I said, well, they've just come out of the engine room and look, and they were sort of, whoa, and, and, and smiling and being very friendly and, and, and going down to a wonderful smell of French cooking. <laughs> and he thought, hmm. And then this boat sped out from the shore and we were given packed lunches, packed lunches, which we opened. And the seagulls really had a heyday because <laughs> cheese and what? <laughs> What's that? Meat paste? What? <laughs> the, uh, the chocolate fingers were all right and the, the orange. <laughs> While they were all having whatever it was. <laughs> and I remember one of them gave me a little pin uh, of... Uh, no, I can't remember. It must have. It was a. It was well. It was a French. It could have been Brigitte Bardot if she was operating at the time. I. I don't remember. She probably was. Uh, as a sort of souvenir, which I've still got. That was my souvenir of the filming of Dunkirk. <laughs> Harry Watt, uh, who made The Overlanders, it was a very famous film. He directed some of the stuff, and I know he's not really, I don't think he's mentioned in the credits, but he was associated with Ealing and uh, obviously a distinguished documentary filmmaker. Uh, and he, all the, 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 the gathering of the small boats, the setting off from Teddington Lock, and going down the turn, this wonderful scene where they're sort of, then the music swells, and the, uh, the, the fighter, the Massey Shore fighter, joins, and it all becomes a, it becomes a fleet. Uh, and Harry sort of, he directed that, and he, he kept on shouting at us. From the, he said, to me, you know, because he said, do something, do something. I said, coil a rope. So I had a coil of rope, and I'd sit there. And then he's come, do something! <laughs> so there's only one rope. <laughs> How many times? But uh, so uh, he was he was quite, <laughs> it was a great pleasure, that, that sequence uh, with him shouting at us. I don't remember rehearsing. I mean, like the, the, the whole company meets I, uh, and sits down with the script, and no, no, I, no, there was none of that. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe the, the uh, Richard Attenborough and John Mills and all those who had uh, sort of uh, uh, pre-production discussions and all that, but no, you turned up with your, uh, and you, you did it. Church parade? Yeah, Sunday morning. Sunday? Yes, of course, I should have known. I'm glad I came, Frankie. Very glad. My own personal uh, anecdote of uh, Bernard Lee, you know, who was finally, uh, he was shot on the beach, hit in an air attack, and he was dying, and he had the death scene with, to me, uh, and uh, <laughs> you're talking about rehearsing, yes, and he was sort of lying, and he had to say, Frankie, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. He said, tell my wife, tell my wife. Uh, <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. He said, tell my bank manager, tell my bookie. <laughs> that was his, uh, uh, maybe he was trying to sort of uh, get me, get the adrenaline flowing or something, but he was a great character. But... Get to the boat, Frankie. Tell Holden, tell my wife. We'll get your way with us. I don't think so. So did the filmmakers uh, feel a responsibility to the, you know, to get it as truthful and accurate as possible? Well, I assume they did. I mean, it wasn't any sort of a, 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 no big deal was made about it. But what struck me, thinking about the film, was that it was just 17 years after the event and also a lot of the, the people who were in the film had served, not necessarily at Dunkirk. Michael Bates, uh, he, was, uh, he was in the Gurkhas, 
uh, so uh, and his uh, most of his experience was in the Far East. But they were all they all had they went through the war, and so it wasn't uh, they didn't have to say oh we have to get this right and we have to research it. They actually, and you looked at some of the. the I just had a look at at, the, at a bit of the film, and uh, I thought all those sort of briefing sets and the the senior officers, and the, I thought all those wonderful character actors. And of course, some of them had been in uniform. They'd worn that uniform for real uh, during the war. So they, uh, it was taken for granted, really. They. The, it, they did the they did the the show you know uh, and and what a show. My uncle was uh, was uh, was there. He was in in Dunkirk. Uh, well, he was he was uh, with the Royal Ulster Rifles, and they were there and were evacuated. And one of the m most moving sequences for me, well, well, it was full of moving sequences. But personally, there's a tracking shot at night. Uh, and the town is being bombarded, and they're all sort of crouched in the, in the dunes. And there's a voiceover, and people are saying, you know, things are praying or whatever they're saying things. Uh, and they get tracked by, and there's one, and it comes to them that says, "This mother of mercy, see me through this night. Mother of mercy, see me through this night." In the accent of my, and I thought that was, <laughs> I sort of, go, oh, yeah. Because he never really talked, he never talked about it. Again, another one who never talked about it. 15. Mother of mercy, keep me through this night. 25. Mother of mercy, keep me through this night. Mother of mercy, keep me through this night. There you are, Frankie. Oh, good evening, Mr. Holden. What was wrong with the machine? Oh, the die got jammed. I reset it, same as last time. Oh, let's have a look. There are many times when you join the thing and you, you don't necessarily feel you belong. That was the thing. I felt I belonged. You talk about John Mills and, and Richard Attenborough. We all kind of belonged to the whole thing. You know, we felt, so you were saying, well, do you want to do it as well as you can? Well, whatever, whatever happened, it, it, had, it, was, uh, it was good. I don't, one doesn't know how these things happen, you know. So I wasn't intimidated. I mean, I just was felt uh, privileged to be working with them, you know, because I admired them. I mean, they were, they were both really good, and they were in films that you'd seen, and uh, really good films. So uh, you were associated with quality. Uh, and, uh, and Richard Attenborough, I spent most of the time, and, and that was that was fantastic. Uh, and he was very helpful to me and also on in my career, so that was really good. What's the matter, Frankie? Frankie, what's the matter? Where's Mr. Foreman? He's dead, Mr. Holden. He's dead. I first saw the film at the premiere uh, at the Empire Leicester Square. Uh, which was a very big deal. Uh, I remember uh, my agent escorted me, uh, and Charlton Heston was there, wearing a wearing a, a cloak with a red silk lining. And I thought, this is this is show business. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Everybody were impressed by the. I mean, it made a big impact. The film, and we said, "Oh yes, you were in Dunkirk," and I sort of went into other films, you know, uh, and uh, it sort of was sort of on, it's a role. It went on a role. Oh, and of course, Richard Adam. I mentioned Richard. I mustn't forget. He said uh, at the end of the film, he said, "Would you be interested in uh, a contract with uh, with Ealing uh, MGM, yes, Ealing hyphen MGM?" As they were, uh, I said, "Yes." Uh, and did I, I was signed up, and they signed up um, uh, Rodney Diak, who was one of it, was also in, in Dunkirk. Uh, Maggie Smith was uh, one of the, there was a kind of st Shirley Ann Field. Uh, there was a, a kind of stable of us, and it didn't because Ealing was coming to the very end of its its uh, existence. But uh, I, I got paid anyway, and went to a lot of uh, cocktail parties. Uh, but that was, and then I did work a lot with Richard Attenborough 
throughout uh, on uh, a lot of post-production voice work on on his films, you know, like Gandhi and all the rest of it. So it did uh, it did uh, affect my career uh, well. Did I know that the Smiths had used the cover of me on uh, the How Is Now record? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I was I was told. And people, again, started to treat you with respect and sort of, well, of course you're on the cover of, uh, um, what? No, I didn't, I didn't know at all. And, and uh, uh, I had no uh, sort of uh, uh, monetary reward for that. But anyway, the, the, the uh, still belonged to the company, the film company. So, but people still... Uh, <laughs> I sometimes go for interviews, and, and they, that's the first thing they mention. It's not that I don't think you, you don't think I'm not even right for this part. You just want to talk about uh, the cover of the Smiths, uh, you know. <laughs> what it does is, and even the bit I looked at last night, I thought, and I, I thought, well, that's that's really good, because nobody seems. They just seem to actually fit into the. I suppose because it's black and white, uh, but it just, they all belong in it. They don't seem to be sort of, I am presenting something. Uh, in which case, I mean, there are many different styles of, of, uh, of uh, acting and, and, and presenting is very important in some, uh, but they just, they were being. Without, without sort of acting being. I was I was very impressed, including myself. Oh, I thought that was rather good. My young self, that little bit I saw, oh, that that was all right. And also, it does. I mean, it is a long time ago. And so you, it's sitting back and looking at uh, people going through this. And even Bernard Lee Bernard is very well known, but he's still. He of course he had this wonderful way of anyway. He didn't. Uh, he was not histrionic. Uh, he had this wonderful he being true so that's uh, that's what i felt